asking if I wanted to spot the fill in for him from time to time. I was like, sure, ain't never heard of him.
Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together and lift them up this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Amen, 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 amen. You may be seated. I am Pastor Lawrence. My love to buy Pastor Keita will be in in just a second. We want to say thank you for being in service this morning. Thank you for watching online this morning, tuning in. We know you could have been anywhere else, but you listened to the voice of God and you tuned in to us this morning. I always say a special thank you to everybody in this season of life because, you know, we are in a city that's called Mardi Gras. Amen. And there are a lot of people that may press their way or may not press their way today. But look at somebody and tell them, I'm so glad you came to the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Now, at this moment, any first time guest in the room, you're visiting with us for the very first time, if you are, we just ask that you stand for just a moment. We're not going to ask you to say nothing or do nothing. You know, the old church want to know your determination and all that. We're not going to do that to you. Amen. I am Pastor Lawrence. We want to say thank you for being here. Now, we want you to know because you came through those doors, we already considered you to be part of this family, amen? Now, in the seat in front of you is a Get Connect card. You don't have to fill it out, but if the Lord leads you to connect with us as a friend, as a member, or whichever way the Lord may put it on your heart to connect with us, just check it off on that card, and a member of our ministry team will contact you tomorrow, one way or the other, and just let you know on the next steps of what it means to be connected with us as a friend or as a member, amen? And once again, because you came through the doors, we already consider you to be part of our family. Come on, church family, let's welcome our first time guests the way we know how, amen? Living the word is the place to belong. We demonstrate love, helping families stay strong. Just a couple of um, handheld announcements while I have the time before we um, do our video announcements on two things. Well, actually three things, three things, and really want you to pay attention um, to what I'm about to tell you. One, um, right after service today, we have a christening in the sanctuary, so we're going to need everybody, if you're not part of that christening, to go on and vacate the sanctuary so we can take care of that. Number two, number two, on this Wednesday night for Black History Month, we are having movie night here, amen? We are having movie night, um, and I think the name of the movie is Rise Again, and it's about the true story about Black Wall Street and what they did to us and how they destroyed a whole town to kill what God had put in the hands of us as people. So we're gonna be showing that movie. Please bring your children. You come to get educated because a lot of people don't know the truth and a lot of people don't even know what happened. So we're going to be showing that movie. It's very, very good. We are, it's going to be just like the theater. We're going to have free popcorn, free drinks for you. Amen. I'm not giving you no nachos and hot dogs. Don't ask about all that stuff. Amen. But you will, get, uh, you will be able to have popcorn, drink some other things. So we're asking that everybody come out and support this. Please bring your kids because here it is. If we don't teach them, the school system won't. Amen. So somebody has to teach us about us, amen? While we understand that heaven is a diverse heaven and that when we get to heaven, the only thing that, when God looks down on us, the only thing that he sees is blood. Amen, he don't see color, but at the same time, when we look in the mirror, we can't forget who we are either. And we need to educate our kids, amen? Amen, um, third thing, third thing, um, effective next Sunday, not this Sunday, effective next Sunday, the governor, as well as 48 out of the 50 states now have lifted the mass mandates. There are no longer any mass mandates for anything. Um, we are actually, they believe, ending, coming into what is called the endemic, where you could be able to navigate um, the, this virus almost like the flu or whatever is what they're saying. So here it is. We have the one, one thing about the word of God and being a Christian. The Bible tells us that we are subject to the laws of the land. And while I'm not necessarily in agreement with it, 
I have to not force it on anybody. I have to do this. So effective next Sunday, mask will be an option. Mask will be an option. If you want to wear your mask, you can still wear your mask. But I'm not in a position anymore that I can order or mandate anybody to do something that the law tells you you don't have to do. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, you're the pastor of the church and we ain't subject to the laws of the land. That ain't the Bible tells us in Romans 13. Amen. I'm going to say it again. That's not what the Bible tells us. You can't live part of the word. You got to live all of it. Amen. So effective next Sunday, um, mass is an option. If you want to wear your mask, feel free to wear your mask. I am going to wear mine. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm going to wear mine. But I can't force you to wear one anymore after today. Amen? Amen? Now, don't let that keep you at home because somebody around you is not wearing a mask. That didn't stop you from going to Dillard's. It didn't stop you from going to the movie. It didn't stop you from going to Walmart. Don't let it stop you from coming to church. Amen? Amen? Amen. amen. Everybody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I can see it. You know, man, he ain't going to wear a mask at church no more. He ain't going to church no more. Then stop going to work. Y'all still all right with me? Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Uh, we ready for our announcements? Let's receive our announcements. Wednesday night Bible study. In honor of Black History Month, this Wednesday night, we will be showing the movie Rise Again, Tulsa and the Red Summer. Come out, bring the kids and a friend. Find out what really happened to Black Wall Street. Popcorn and drinks will be served. Be on time. The movie will start at 7.05 p.m. They got word that trouble was coming. The white folks are killing the color. Barbaric violence was committed against Black people across this country. Kerosene was dropped from an airplane. Why did nobody ever teach us this? Because they didn't want you to know. When it was an opportunity to wipe out a community, they took it. I cannot imagine that there are mass graves somewhere in our community and we didn't try to find them. They're buried somewhere, and the question is where? have encountered human remains. It was like they had found people who had been disappeared by history. The earth had unleashed the truth. We view this as a murder investigation. I'm gonna raise my voice. I'm Some people say that city officials orchestrated a cover-up. It wasn't a movie. It wasn't a chapter in a book. It happened to real people. They burned the whole town down. But it will rise again. Youth Church. Youth Church has started back for ages 2 to 12th grade. Two-year-olds to first grade will meet in classrooms two and three in the sanctuary. Second to fifth grade will meet on the second floor in Joy Bell. And sixth to twelfth grade will meet on the first floor in Joy Bell. Youth Church will be every Sunday except for the first Sunday of the month. Please make sure every child has a mask. If not, we will have one on hand. We would like to thank everyone that has joined in to teach or assist in Youth Church. Spiritual Enrichment Sunday School. Come out and take joy in a morning of teaching where you can interact with the speaker and expand your knowledge of the Bible. Every Sunday morning at 8 a.m., we meet in Brazelton Hall for a deeper look at the Word of God. Bring someone out with you and enjoy the fellowship. Breaking news, LTWI Scholarships. LTWI will award at least one four-year scholarship to a graduating high school senior who are members of the church and will attend a two- or four-year college, vocational training school, or university during the 2022-23 school year. 
Applications are available online or in the vestibule or may be picked up at the administration office during normal business hours. Completed applications are due no later than close of business Friday, March 11th and must be mailed in to the church's administration office. The postmark will serve as the official validation. Completed applications cannot be dropped off at the church's admin office. You must be mailed in. If you have any questions, contact Sister Karen at 985-649-4687 or email news at ltwi.org. The email address is preferred. Spotlight. Congratulations to Ashanti Sibley, who was one of the featured designers at New York Fashion Week last week. She is the CEO of the Ashanti Way and Sherbana Clothing Company. Ashwanti is the daughter of Brother Eddie and Minister Candy Martin. We are so proud of your accomplishment and can't wait to see where the Lord is bringing you. Discovery is at the heart of the study of African American history. Louis Latimer's parents bravely escaped from slavery to freedom and settled in Chelsea, Massachusetts, where Louis was born. He taught himself mechanical drawing while working in a patent office, and those skills would lay the foundation for his achievements as an inventor. Having first collaborated on a water closet for railroad cars, Latimer set to work inventing a light bulb that would dramatically improve upon Thomas Edison's original design. Latimer figured out how to make the carbon filament work more effectively and therefore become more useful so that the light bulb would burn much longer. He eventually sold one of his patents to the United States Electric Lighting Company. This breakthrough would lead to a productive, creative relationship between Latimer and Edison. Working with Edison in his lab, Latimer played a key role in the burgeoning electric lighting business. In the late 19th century, a woman named Sarah Boone played a pivotal role as an inventor who would transform the everyday task of ironing clothes. At that time, most people would iron fabric by placing a wooden plank between two surfaces. As a skilled dressmaker, Sarah Boone was determined to find a better way. What Sarah Boone was able to figure out, in order to iron women's clothes in particular more effectively, a simple rectangular ironing board was not as useful as one that was curved and made narrow at one end. Boone was granted a patent for her invention in 1892. She earned a place in black history as the fourth African-American woman to be awarded a patent in the history of the United States. Against enormous odds, Louis Latimer and Sarah Boone set the standard for future black inventors. Today, many African-Americans extend the tradition and innovation that they pioneered in science and technology. Amen. Amen. Easy Tithe. For those who wish to give electronically, Easy Tithe has been set up to make it more convenient for you to give. Through Easy Tithe, you can pay your tithe, give an offering, or sow a seed from your mobile device, cell phone, or computer. Easy Tithe is a secure online giving platform that allows you to give at any time or set up recurring offerings. If you wish to use Easy Tithe online giving, please visit our website at ltwi.org or text LTWI to 45777. Again, if you wish to use Easy Tithe online giving, please visit our website at ltwi.org or text LTWI to 45777. This has been your LTWI News. We pray that you will have an awesome worship experience and receive everything you came expecting to receive from God. And remember, if you live the Word, the Word will live through you. If you need to review this week's announcements, please visit our church's website at www.ltwi.org. Amen. Amen. Let's rest to our feet in worship. How many of you know you're not alone because he is your shepherd? And no matter what the situation is, he'll guide you through it. He'll lead you to it. He'll cover you through it. Amen. The Lord is
is my shepherd. Lord is my shepherd. He always got me. He goes before me. Defender behind me. Defender behind me.
always hold me close.
Come on, y'all can keep y'all can keep praising God right there. Thank you all. Y'all can keep praising God. Come on. Give him the fruits of your lips right now. Give him the fruits of your lips right now. Magnify him. Oh, magnify the Lord this morning. Come on, oh, magnify the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. While you're just standing with your hands lifted in the air. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you this morning, God, at this set-aside time, this appointed time to hear from you, God. Now, Father, as I stand here now before your people, God, I ask that you would just speak through me to them, God. Let them hear from the throne of grace this morning, God, in the name of Jesus. Let them not pay attention to me, but let them be sensitive to your voice this morning, God. Speak it to the ear gates, God, that the eye gates will be open to experience your glory, to live life, God, according to your word. And Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Before you take your seat, point at three or four people tell them, say, I love you whether you like it or not. Say, so, yeah, I really do love you whether you like it or not. <laughs> Amen. Once you do that, go on and have your seats and grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles as you're taking your seats. All right. um, I, I can tell you now that um, I don't have enough time on the clock. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you up front. I do not have enough time on the clock, so I ain't even paying attention to it today. Amen. But I'm not going to keep you all day because we do have a motto here. It don't take all day to say what you got to say. It don't take all night to get it right. It don't have to be long to be strong. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're gonna, I'm going to say what I have to say with thus says the Lord and I'm going to get out of the way. Amen. 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 Hold your Bibles in the air. Let's do that declaration. Repeat after me. Say, Lord, this is my Bible. I believe that every word is inspired by you. Therefore, I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do, and I can have what it says I can have. Now say this with attitude. Say, devil, this is the sword of the spirit. I should be considered armed and extremely dangerous. No weapon formed against me will ever prosper because I am living the word. I am living the word. I am living the word in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. James chapter 4. James chapter 4. Amen. James chapter 4. Beginning with verse 7. Look what it says. It says, therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But verse 8. Draw near to God, and he will. Without option, draw near to you. We can stop right there. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Look at three people in your area. Tell them, say, we've got to get closer to God. I only heard it one time until you tell three people. <laughs> Amen. Everybody said it at one time. We've got to get closer to God. Ain't nobody else said another word after that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. On oh, last week, guys, we began um, a new teaching series titled Drawing Closer to God. And the purpose of this teaching lines up with the prophetic word that was, was released on this house at New Year's service. And that word is simple. I'm going to keep saying it until we get it in our spirit. Thus says the Lord. He says that if my people turn back to me, if they desire to be more intimate with me, if they will make me their priority, he said, then I will return, I will restore, make the devil restore and return everything he's ever stolen from you. He said, if any area that you lack, he said, I will send abundance if you make me your priority. He said, this is the year 
of restitution. Amen? Everybody shout restitution. So understanding that, we've been teaching lessons all year since the beginning of this year that deals with the fact of that prophetic word. So we started on the one on last week, draw, drawing closer to God. Why? One of the qualifiers for restitution is to become more intimate with God. He said, I want to be more intimate with you. Now, here's the deal. Let me, let me break down intimacy. And I, I like what Pastor Keita, her definition of this when we do premarital counseling. Intimacy is get into me, see. Let me say it again. Get into me, see. See, you've been, you've been watered down to believe that intimacy in relationships was sex. Intimacy Intimacy is not sex. Sex is sex. Intimacy is getting into me see. In other words, learn how to see me for who I am. Learn the integral parts of who I am. Get an understanding of who I am. Now, how many people in here, where the married people at? Hey Amen. You're going to hear me say this a couple of times today. How many of y'all know that if you don't have no intimacy, ain't nothing working in your house? <laughs> Amen. Ain't nothing working in your house. Amen. So last week we started this series, Drawing Closer to God. We started by looking, just a quick recap, we started by looking at the Apostle Paul, who has one of the most intimate relationships with God recorded in the Bible. And in Philippians 3, 7 through 10, it says, Here's what Paul said. He said, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. He said, yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I mean, Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered loss of all things. He said, I don't mind giving it all up for Christ. He goes on and he says, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. And he said, here's why, that I may know him. He said, I will give it all up just to know him. He said, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. In verse 12, he said, not that I have already obtained or already perfected. He said, but I press. Everybody shout, I press. He said, I press. And he said, why? He said, I am pressing. Why? That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Paul said, all I want to do is know Jesus. And he said, if I got to give it all up for the purpose of of knowing Jesus, he said, I would give it all up that I may know him. He said, I want to not just know him. He said, I want to know him and I want to lay hold on him the same way he laid hold on me. You see, some of us got a Paul story. You see, some of us was running from God and had been running from God so long that God literally had to strike our butts to make us line up. Anybody got in that place that you came to Jesus because he struck you? See, the Bible tells us on Damascus Road that he knocked him off that horse. And when he knocked him off that horse, he got Paul's attention. See, God has a way of getting your attention when he wants to bring you in. Amen? So he said, the same way you laid hold of me, the same way you got my attention, the same way that you thought about me, the same way you grabbed me and drew me into you, he said, I want to do the same with you. Amen? And then when we looked at that, we looked at it in the Message Bible as well. It says, these very credentials... These people are waving around as something special. He said, I'm tearing up and throwing them out with the trash. He said, along with everything else I used to take credit for. And why? Because of Christ, yes, all the things I once thought were so important are gone from my life. He said, compared to the high privilege of knowing Christ Jesus as my master firsthand, he said, everything I once thought I had going, going for me is insignificant. He says, dog done. He said, I've dumped it in all, I dumped it all in the trash so I could embrace Christ and be embraced by him. He said, I don't want some petty, inferior brand of righteousness that comes from keeping a list of rules. He said, when I could get the robust kind that comes from trusting Christ, God's righteousness. He said, I'm counting everything as lost. He said, matter of fact, I count everything I ever achieved in my life. He said, I compared it to be dog done. 
Do you see that? So he said, I don't, want, I don't want anything, I don't want to spend more time with anything that's going to take me away from my relationship with Jesus Christ. He said, anything that's getting in the way, he said, I want it out. Let me ask you a question. What's in your life that you're willing to give up just to know Christ? Let me ask again. I asked that side, they looked at me. I'm going to ask this side. What's in your life that you're willing to give up to know more of Jesus? To have a better relationship with him. What are you willing to give up? Amen? So we moved on from there. And, and Paul said, I'm not letting anything get in my way. Verses 13 and 14. He says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but the one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. He said, I press. Somebody say, I press. He said, I press towards the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So what we need to understand is if we want to grow closer to God, we have to really listen to Paul's heart, and then we have to try to imitate that type of heart for Jesus Christ. Amen? So that's when we went to James. James chapter 4, verse 8, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. For months... I've been saying this, and I'm going to keep saying this until this entire church grows to this place that they have a burning desire in their heart to be this. We are not going to do church. We are going to be the church. Amen. See, we're not called to do church. We are called, let me get a towel, sir. We are called to be church. You see, you know, we just do so much stuff in church that, are, like Paul said, I don't need no list of rules and regulations. He said, I need real righteousness. You see, just like, 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 you know, we, look at us. We come dressed any kind of way you want to dress. And once again, I am not knocking anybody's faith. I'm not knocking how you practice. I'm not knocking what you do. I'm just saying what we're not going to do. Amen. Amen? You know, y'all, you know, everybody tell me, ooh, they, look at that child coming to church. And her, skirt, her skirt's too short. Your long one go up too. <laughs> so just because of that, your ankle don't mean it don't go up. I can't believe they got all that makeup. Some of us need it. <laughs> hey, man, I ain't just talking about the sisters. Brothers wear makeup, too. I ain't talking about the gay ones, either. Some of, every man on TV wears makeup. That's the reason why people put makeup on, to hide the blemishes. Now, you see, everybody was laughing at them wearing makeup, but here's the truth of the matter is, you've been hiding your faults all your life. You just had a different kind of makeup. Let me come right back like I did last week. I don't want nobody throwing nothing at me, amen? So when we talked about this, it, God says it's simple. He said, the moment you begin to draw near me, he said, I will draw near you. Our problem is we've been conditioned to wait on, to wait, to feel something in church. Oh, can I talk about it for a moment? That we got to come and feel something. And God said, I, don't, I ain't about no emotions. He said, I'm tired of people who know how to sing the song, know the lyrics to the song, know how to shout, know when to dance, the, the perfect time to start a dance. He said, you know the lyrics, they're embedded in your heart, but your spirit ain't buried in mine. So here it is, God. We got to stop coming to church doing what church has always done and learn how to become the church. And how are we going to learn how to become the church? We got a purpose in our heart to do what? To draw closer to God. Are you with me? Amen. You know, I'm going to leave that alone. I gave you a perfect example while I was talking about press. And everybody shout out press. We talked about the woman, that, the woman with the issue of blood last week. And the woman with the issue of blood, everything said that she couldn't come out of the house. She couldn't be in the public. She couldn't be amongst people. She couldn't touch people. But she got tired of being dealing with her issue. Twelve years, continuously, every single day, she was on a cycle. For twelve years. And here it is. She spent all of her money, went to every doctor. Nobody can help her. But then she heard about Jesus. You see, let me drop that plug in too once again. See, the problem is we got a lot of people, God has delivered you from something, but you're so embarrassed about what he delivered you from, from 
what he delivered you from. You're not telling nobody what you used to do that God delivered you out of so the people around you still in bondage. But somebody told her about Jesus. And she said, hey, I didn't heard about Jesus, so here it is, 12 years. I don't have no other hope. He's my only shot. He's my last chance. He said, you know what? I'm going in the public. I'm going to press. I'm going to get through the crowd. I'm going to do what I have to do. See, some of us, your miracle is waiting on the other side of you getting through your distractions. So you've been so distracted by the petty stuff that you can't even get to what God has for you. So she pressed away and she got there. She said, if I can only touch him. And then when she touched him, the Bible said that she was healed immediately and made whole. Can I tell you something? That when you get in the presence of God, the power of God, the presence of God, that you can't stay the same? When you really get into the presence, you really touch Jesus, ain't nothing about you going to remain the same. So she said, he said, if if I could just touch him. And when she touched him, Jesus stopped. He said, who touched me? And the disciples were like, hold up, hold up, Jesus. All these people out here, they're pressing on us. They're thronging against us. They're reaching over us. Everybody's touching you. He said, no, 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 no. You don't understand. He said, they can sing it. They can dance it. They can shout it. But everybody can't touch me. He said, somebody touched me with faith just now. Somebody touched me believing God for a miracle. Somebody touched me just now believing God for a healing. And he said, I know a real touch from a fake one. He said, who touched me? And when he turned around, the Bible said that he stopped immediately and he turned around. And he turned around, he started looking for who touched him. Why? Because when you draw closer to God, God's going to turn around and draw closer to you. And when he began to look, and she, he, when she knew that he knew it was her, that's when the Bible says she went to him and told him everything. She said, look, I knew that you were a healer. I heard that you are a deliverer. I heard that you would make me whole. So I knew that if I could just touch you, you would uh, draw close to you, you were going to draw close to me. See, some of us, the only reason why we're not close to God, because we made no effort to get close to him. But she pressed her way through Amen? So that brought me to the last thing we talked about last week. Everybody shout praise and worship. Can I tell you the truth about praise and worship? Here's a fact for you. Worship is one of the best and most purest ways to draw closer to God. I'm going to say that again. Worship. Everybody shout worship. Let me tell you something. See, the Bible, if you really read the Bible and you learn who Lucifer was before he fell. See, there are some people who believe that Lucifer was a massive musician because in the Bible, it talked about the workmanship of his temples and his pipes were great. They said that he's a master musician. So here it is, because he wanted to be seen, he wanted to be observed, he wanted to be equal to God, God kicked him out of heaven. So what he's been doing ever since then is trying to stop you from getting in touch and being close to God. So why do you think that everybody comes to church late? See, you think it's just you waking up late and you're tired. No, it's the devil keeping you out of praise and worship. Because he knows that if you can enter to worship, you'll draw closer to God. Because see, praise and worship is not you singing alone. Praise and worship is the time that God has set aside for you to talk to him and for him to talk back to you. See, when you get into real worship, you don't even recognize that nobody else is even in the room. Because it's just you and God. And you're telling God, when you're dealing with it, God is speaking back to you. See, that's why when you come to worship, you can't worry about talking to your neighbor. You see, when you're really, you really pressing in for worship, and I told her she was going to get this in the moment when I told her this earlier, because see, worship is a place that when you are sick, you should get to worship more than getting to the Word. Because see, worship is when you go into His presence. When you get into His presence is when all things that are not like Him has to fall. They have to come off of you. You get delivered. You get healed. You get set free in worship. But he wants to keep you out of praise and worship because why? He just wants you to hear a word and then he wants to taint the word, steal the word and come against you. So you want to apply the word. But he knows if you ever step into the presence of God, you ever step into praise and worship and you come with the right heart, you would draw closer to God. God would draw closer to you and everything you need will happen even before the word starts. Somebody shout worship. That's why it's important for you to press your way. Everybody shout press. So you got to learn how to press your way to praise and worship. 
I told you, God told me to tell you three weeks ago, praise and worship is not the opening act. Praise and worship is the time God wants to talk to you personally. And every Sunday that you don't make it here for that, you miss an opportunity to draw close. If you can't say amen, you can say ouch. You see, praise and worship is the time. You got to get this. Praise and worship, like the woman with the issue of the blood, is the time that you press in and you begin to give God the fruits of your lips. You begin to talk to God. God is so moved that you're talking to him. Then now, all of a sudden, you begin to touch God. And when you touch God, God says, now you're being intimate with me. And because you're intimate with me, everything I have for you is released. You see, how many of y'all know no intimacy, you ain't getting nothing? <laughs> Let me come back here. So I try to make it where you can understand it. Some of y'all missed it. Amen. Today, let's pick up. Go to 2 Chronicles chapter 15. 2 Chronicles chapter 15. If somebody, wants, if somebody wants to get close enough to God where you could touch him and he knows that you're really touching him, shout glory. Second Chronicles chapter 15, beginning with verse 1 and 2. It says that, Now the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Odad, and he went out to meet Asa, and he said to him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. He said, I'm about to prophesy to you. Here's the prophecy. It's simple, but it's profound. He said, The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. He said, thus says the Lord. He said, you want to find God? You look for God, he'll find you. He said, you seek him, he's going to seek you. He said, but if you forsake him, then he's going to forsake you. Now, I need to set the stage for you. What is happening here, when you go back to 2 Chronicles chapter 14, thank you, 2 Chronicles chapter 14, you will find that Asa, the king of Judah, the Lord was with him, and the Lord said that he was a good and right man. He did the right things. So when he became king, he began to tear down all of the false altars that were made to the altar, all of the false gods, and he began false gods, and he began to teach the people how to seek God. But as a result of it, the enemy attacked. The Ethiopians attacked them, and the enemy came against them. How many of y'all know that when you start doing what God wants you to do, that the enemy is coming? Amen. So look what he told him. He said, "Here it is." You must continue, this is for somebody, you must continue to seek God because as long as we are seeking God, all of our enemies will fall before us. As long as they sought God, God will show up and smite the enemy. But when they stop seeking God, God will get out the way and let the enemy have their way. Some of us got some battles that you've been fighting too long. And the only thing God is telling you today to change it is that you need to seek him so he can handle it. Are you with me? As long, get this. He said, as long as we are intimate with God, we win. But the moment we stop being intimate with God, we lose. So he said, I need everybody to understand that we need to seek God. Well, they were going back and forth. So now the prophet comes in and he tells him, he said, look, if you are going to seek God, then God will seek you. If you find him, he'll find you. But if you forsake him, he's going to forsake you. So here it is. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. The king told him that. Now you got a prophet who's coming to tell him the same thing. But look what he says in verses 3 and 4. He says, for a long time Israel has been without a true God, without a teaching priest, and without law. But when, in, when in they are in trouble, they turn to the Lord of God of Israel, and he and sought him. And look what he said. And he was found by them. He said, when are y'all going to get it that every time you draw close, God shows up? 
Do y'all see here, this in the word? So they were without God in trouble, with God victorious. Now look what verses 5 through 10 says. And in those times there was no peace to the one who went out, nor to the one who came in, but great turmoil was on all the inhabitants of the land. So nation was destroyed by nation, and city by city, for God troubled them with every adversity. But you be strong, and do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. And when, and here it is, and when Asia heard, this is for somebody, and when Asia heard these words and the prophecy of, of Odad the prophet, I mean, Ezra the prophet, he took courage, and here it is, he removed the abominable items, idols from all the land of Judah and Benjamin and from the cities which he had taken in the mountains of Ephraim, and he restored the altar of the Lord that was before the vestibule of the Lord. Then he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and those who dwelt in them from Ephraim, Manasseh, and Simeon, for they had came over to him in great numbers for Israel when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. Here it is. I don't know if you caught it. It says that when he heard that when you seek God, God is with you. When you don't seek him, or you forsake him, he leaves you. He said when he heard that God would always be with him if he sought him, he got rid of everything that was not like God in his life. Somebody got that just now. In other words, he got rid of all of the idols. He got rid of all of the worldly things. You ready for this? He got rid of them old CDs. He got rid of them old DVDs. He pulled them magazines from under the bed. He got the videotapes from out the back of the closet. Y'all know where I'm going with that. Amen. He got all of those things. He stopped watching the more things on his computer. You know? He, well, Pastor, I don't have no magazines. I must be good. I don't have no videotapes in the back. I must be good. I don't watch no pornography on my computer. He changed his playlist. Because, see, when you want something from God, what are you willing to give up to get God? You see, some of us, we, we say that we want, we want to come in here and say, my worship. God said, those who worship me, worship me in spirit and in truth. You can't come worship for 15 minutes on a Sunday and then you're back to your old playlist the rest of the week. I'm just trying to help somebody. See, because we don't pay attention how amazing it is that the very things that we run behind are really idols. You say, I said this for years. There are people right now who are not in anybody's church because they're washing their idol. They're waxing their idol. Because this is the morning that they clean their car to go riding on the coast. Are you with me? You see, he said, if, he said here it is. He said, we're going to get rid of anything that is stopping us from seeking God. And when I tell you that they were serious about it, look what it says in verses 12 and 13. It says, then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. And whoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel was put to death. Whether small or great, whether man or woman. They established a covenant that everyone had to seek the Lord or else they had to go. I ain't talking about move out. They killed them. Somebody shout, thank God for grace. Man, how many of us would be dead today if that, that covenant was still in place? Amen? Here's another fact for you. God desires intimacy with you and I. He desires intimacy with you and I. Get this. He desires to be so intimate with us that he established it in the beginning of time. Think about it. God created the heavens and the earth, had everything in place, and then said, let us make man. He said, but here it is. We make a man so we could be intimate with him. So in order to be intimate with him, we got to relate to him. So let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness so we could fellowship and we could commune. And he said, but here it is, because I want him to understand who he is Let's give him dominion and authority over everything we created. So he said, when you're intimate with me, then everything I own belongs to you. 
So he created man, and man is now, the Bible said that God came down literally in the cool of the day to meet man. But here's what he told man. He said, man, I'm, he, the Bible said he created a garden and he placed man in it to keep it. So he said, here it is. I'm giving you exceedingly abundantly more than you can actually think. He said, as far as your eye can see, it's all yours. He said, but in this garden, don't, get, don't fool, there's not tulips and collard greens and cabbage. In this garden were diamonds, rubies, jewels. It was everything known to man, every element known to man. So in the garden, he prospered and didn't like anything. And God said, here's how it is. When we're intimate, I need you to understand you just like me. You're in my image. You're in my likeness. You're not supposed to lack in anything when we have a relationship. But what Adam did, him and his wife decided, because God told me, he said, you can have everything in here but that one tree. He said, see that tree of knowledge of good and evil? He said, you can't have that one. Don't touch that one. Now I can imagine in my own imagination, well, look, God, you gave me all of this stuff. Why I can't touch that one? He said, because I said knowledge, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and you don't have to experience evil to know who I am. You don't have to sin to know who I am. You just got to have a relationship with me to know I am. You don't have to know the devil exists to know that I'm real. He said, so don't touch that one. Leave that one alone. But when man ate of it, he now knew evil. And because he knew evil, God said, no, no, no. See, now you're no longer like me. See, that's, that's why people have been lying. I tell you, we're going to be church and not do church. You know, people told you before you were saved, don't you know you created in the image and likeness of God? That's a lie. Because if you read Genesis chapter 5, around verse 2 and 3, they say that Adam begot a son in his own image and in his own likeness. Because, see, when you were created in the image of God in the beginning, you had no sin. But the moment Adam sinned, you were created in the image of Adam, not in the image of God. That's the reason why you had to be born again in Christ. Because why? When you were born again, the old man passed away and you became a new creature. You went back to who Adam was before he sinned. Look at your name and tell him, say, we're going to be the church, not just do church. So here it is. God said, I want to be intimate with you. So I'm giving you everything. I want you to experience everything. But because you decided that you want to sin, he said, here it is. I got to kick you out of the garden. So because he kicked him out of the garden, but here's the news. This is the whole message that I want to tell you today. Just because he messed up, it didn't stop God from wanting to be intimate with him. Amen. Somebody should have shouted, thank you, Jesus. You see, because see, after he messed up, don't y'all know God knew he messed up the moment he did? So what God did, God came down in the cool of the day like he always did. I fellowship with you every day. I'm intimate with you every day. He said he come down, but this time Adam couldn't be found. Not that God didn't know where he was. God knew where he was because he said, Adam, where are you? And Adam came out. He said, I heard your voice and I became afraid and I hid myself because I was naked. He said, who told you that you were naked? Who told you that you were no longer walking in my will? Who told you that you no longer had the glory on your life? Who told you you no longer had favor on your life? Who told you that, Adam? He said, who told you that? And then when it's all said and done, God said, son, do you understand when I ask you where are you, when I'm really asking you? He said, son, I'm not asking you where you're located. I'm asking you to locate yourself. He said, I need you to find yourself again so you can get back on track because why? I still desire to be intimate with you. See, somebody shall thank you. Just because you messed up don't mean he don't want to be intimate with you. Just because you done made some mistakes don't mean that he turned his back on you. God will never turn his back on you. Are you with me? If you received that shot, I received that, Pastor. But let me ask you a question. God desires to be intimate with us. He wants to fellowship with us. He still comes down in the cool of the day. So my question is, born again believer, when he comes down, is he finding you? 
Or is he asking you, where are you? Because when he comes down, he expects you to be in place. He expects to show up. And when he comes down and say, hey, I knew you'd be here waiting on me. He said, you draw close to me. I'm going to draw close to you. Because here it is. The moment you draw close to him and he, he's going to draw close back to you, he will put you back in the garden. Are you with me? So when it's all said and done, God told him, he said, here it is. He said, you messed up, son. He said, but it was that, that devil. That's the one that caused you to mess up, mess up. He said, so here it is. I always desire to be intimate with you. I will always desire to be intimate with you. So let me put a plan in place that you'll be able to get back to me. Genesis 3, verses 14 and 15. It says, so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, he said, you are cursed more than all the cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you should go. And you should eat dust all the days of your life. And he, look what he said. And I will put enmity between me, between you and the woman. He said, and between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. You know how I know that this is true? Because when you drive down the street, you see a turtle, you weave. You see a snake, you speed up. You see a snake, you ain't talking about, oh, look at my friend. You talking, oh, I'm going to get you, I'm going to kill you. Why? Because God said that her seed and his seed will always be at odds. You're going to strike at the hill and he's going to bruise your head. But then he goes on, what he was really telling me, he said, son, Mr. Serpent, devil, I need you to understand that there's a day coming. And that's the day coming that I'm going to send them a savior who's going to destroy you and all your works. A deliverer who's going to set the captives free. An advocate who's going to intercede at my right hand on their behalf. One who's going to serve as a bridge between me and them. And they're going to be able to get back to me so I could be intimate with my children again. So here it is. He sent us Jesus Christ. And everyone... Who, they, who receives Christ has become a new creation. The whole thing has passed away. And oh, behold what? All things become new. In other words, you're back in the place of intimacy with God. But God says, it's in place. The plan is working, but will you participate? He said, if you draw close to me, he said, I will draw close to you. Look at your neighbor, tell him, say, we got to keep pressing. Go to Levit Leviticus 26. Leviticus chapter 26. Give you a couple of pointers and then we'll be finished for the day. Look what he says in verses 12 and 13. This is God saying this. He said, I will walk among you. Now remember, they fell in Genesis 3. This is all the stuff he's saying since then. He said, I will walk among you and be your God, and you shall be my people. He said, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be slaves. I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you walk upright. Remember, the Old Testament is a type and shadow of things to come. Egypt was a type and shadow of the world system. What God is saying is, he said, I don't want you to be entangled in the world system. He said, I don't want you to be in any type of bondage. He said, because I have caused you to come out of the world system. I have allowed you to go free. He said, the only thing I want is to be intimate with you again so I could be your God and you could be my people. Do y'all see that? So here it is. Anybody come from that life of sin and now that you're in God? How many of y'all would testify that life is much better now than it's ever been? And the reason is because God wants to be intimate with you. Ezekiel chapter 36. Turn to Ezekiel chapter 36. It's always been God's desire to be intimate with you and I, that we would have this relationship with him. 
Look what it says in Ezekiel 36, verses 24 through 28. He said, for I will take you from among the nations, gather you out all of the countries and bring you to your own land. He said, then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all of your filthiness and from all of your idols. He said, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. He said, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments. You will do them. Then you shall dwell in the land. Here it is. I gave to your fathers. My, You shall be my people and I will be your God. He said, the moment you allow me to transform transform you. He said, I will give you restitution of everything I promised your daddy. Do y'all see that? He said, I'm going to take that old sinful nature out of you and I'm going to replace it with my spirit. He said, I'm going to cleanse you. And he said, then you'll be my people and I will be your God. It's always been his desire for us to have an intimate relationship with him. Psalm 73, verse 26. It says, my flesh and my heart fail." But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. You have to believe that God is your portion. What do you mean by that? You have to believe that God is everything you need. If you believe that, shout, he's everything I need. See, from the beginning, God wanted Adam and Eve. He never wanted them to lack in anything. He never wanted them to, to fail in their relationship with him. He never wanted them to be influenced by outside sources. He never wanted them to depend on anything else but him, not even their own selves. Where am I going with this? He always wanted us to be intimate with him and depend on him, and he would give us everything we need and what we desire. Are you with me? But here it is. God told them, I'm going to put a plan in place because I want to be intimate with you even in all your mess. He said, you did the very thing I told you not to do. You ate from the fruit. You ate fruit from the tree I told you not to touch. But that doesn't stop my desire to be intimate with you. He said, I don't care what sin you do. I don't care what mistake you mean. I don't care if you're on paper or not. I don't care if you've been arrested or not. I don't care if you even killed anybody and served time for it and been released. He said, that does not stop my desire to be intimate with you. He said, there's nothing you can do that can stop me for being intimate, stop my desire for having a relationship with you. So I'm going to give you a little, another little fact. That with your crazy self, God is crazy about you. God is madly in love with you. And I'm going to give you one, one, one more thing and then I'm going to get out of your way. Turn to the book of Hosea. I'm going to show you the kind of God we serve. The book of Hosea. In this book, you're going to see that God is speaking to the prophet Hosea. But he tells him to do something that 99.99% of the people in this room would never do. He said, Hosea, I need to show my people the kind of God I am. I need to show them that I will love them no matter who they are. So prophet, here's what I need you to do. I need you to go down to the whorehouse by the prostitute house and go find Gomer. She's a prostitute and I want you to marry her. He said, once you marry her, he said, I want you to hook up with her. I know she's sleeping with every man in the, in, the, in the county. I understand she has a whole different outlook on what it means to be a community server. He said, I understand this. She's serving the whole community. He said, but you're going to take her as a wife. So go down there and marry her. So he goes down. He gets her, he marries her, and then he has a child with her. 
And guess what happens? She went right back to her old ways. She went right back to prostituting. She's sleeping with every man. And guess what God said? He said, now go back and get her. He said, here it is. He said, I know she's sleeping with everybody. I know she's sleeping with every man. And now I want her to bring it back. I understand you think that's just nasty that she's sleeping with everybody. And now she's going to come back and be intimate with you again. He said, but the message I'm trying to send to my people is I don't care what you do. I don't care how you do things. If I could come, if you could go get her, I could go back and get them. Let them know that, yeah, with your nasty self, I still love you. With your nasty self, I still still want you. With your crazy self, I still have a desire to be intimate with you. And nothing you do gonna ever stop me from doing that. He said, go back and get that prostitute and bring her back to your house. And then we got her. He went and got her. And bought her home. And look what the Bible says after that. Beginning with verse 12. He says, therefore, behold, I will allure Israel and bring her into the wilderness. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. And he said, and I will speak tenderly to her to reconcile to her to me. He said, yeah, I understand. See, Israel, Goma represents Israel. She's been committing adultery on me her whole life. Israel is committing adultery on me because Israel wants to be intimate with everybody but me. But I'm not going to let that stop how I feel about Israel. He said, so he said, here it is. I'm going to speak tenderly to her to reconcile her to me. I know she did it, but I'm still in love with her. He said, then I will give her the vineyards from there and make the valley anchor a door, hope and the expectation, anticipating the time when I will restore my favor on her. God said, I don't care what she's been through. I'm going to bring her to a place. I'm going to be tender to her. I'm going to speak to her heart. And all of her troubles, I'm going to change to a door hope. And I'm going to give her a new set of expectations. Verse 15. He goes on to say, and she will sing there and respond as in the days of her youth, as in the day when she came up from the land of Egypt. In verse 16, it should come about in that day, says the Lord, that you call me Ishi, my husband, and will no longer call me Bali, my Baal, which means my master. He said, it's coming a time that although she cheated on me, although she committed adultery on me, I'm going to bring her back and she won't even see me as her God, she'll see me as her husband. Boy, somebody gonna get this in me. He said, "Look, I don't even want you to feel like I'm your God and just and you just my servant." He said, "I want this relationship to be so special that when you see me, you know I'm your husband." Amen. Do you see this? So he goes on and he says, "In other words, he said, by the time I finish with you, you're gonna be singing like you never made a mistake." He said, "You're gonna come out of the bondage that you've been in," and he said, "And because of how I treated you, you're gonna see me differently." Verse 17 and 18. For I will remove the names of the bells from her mouth so that they will no longer be mentioned or remembered by their name. She said, every man, every god, every, every idol you ever slept with. She said, I'm a, he said, I'm going to love you so much they're going to come out your mind. You won't even think about them no more. They will forget them forever. He goes on, so that they will no longer be mentioned. He said, in that day I will make a covenant for Israel with the animals. Oh, this is good. With the animals of the, of, of the open country, with the birds of the heavens, and with the creeping things of the ground. And I will abolish the bowel and the sword and banish water from the land and will make them lie down in safety. He said, I'm going to put you in a season of restitution. Somebody's going to get there. He said, I'm giving you all your authority back. I'm giving you all your dominion back. He said, I'm even making a covenant with the birds the fish and everything on the earth that they have to respond to your command. Whatever you tell them to do, they're going to do it. Wherever you tell them to go, they're going to go because why? I love you so much that I want to be intimate with you and if you would just come back to me, he said, I will put you back in the garden. I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up. He said, why? Because you're not a servant. You're my wife. He said, I'm your husband. Verse 19 and 20. 19 and 20. Look what it says. He said, I will betroth you, Israel, to me forever. He said, I ain't never turning my back on you. I'm taking you back. You're going to always be mine. 
He said, yes, I will betray you to me in righteousness and in justice and loving kindness and loyalty and in compassion. I will betray you to me in stability and in faithfulness. Then you will know, you will recognize, appreciate the Lord and respond with love and faithfulness. He said, once you get a, once you get a real glimpse of who I am and how much I love you, how much I want to be intimate with you, he said, then you will become faithful. You see that? So verse 21, it will come about in that day that I will respond, says the Lord. I will respond to the heavens, here it is, which asked for rain to pour out on the earth. He said, the heavens been wanting to rain down on you, but I held it up. He said, but the moment you get back in place, he said, I will tell heaven to open up. He said, and they will respond to the earth which begs for the rain. I want you to see something. When you respond to God, God responds to you by making everything you have dominion over respond to you. God said, I would tell the heavens to open up and rain down on you. He said, I would tell the ground to grow everything you need. He said, I would tell him everything that I ever created that you are in charge. You have the dominion. You have the power. Whatever you say goes. Do y'all see that? So here's my question for you. If your money ain't working, why it's not? If things ain't going right in your life, then what's really wrong? Is it that God has not put you in the garden? Or is it because you have not drawn closer to God? God said, you're born again. You're saved. Old things have passed away. All, the new, all things have become new. Then why are you not operating in newness, but you're still hanging out in the old? Paul said, I press for getting those things that are behind me. See, when you're talking about having an intimate relationship with Christ, you don't live in the past. You live in the future. Why? Because why? The just what? Live by faith. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Our problem is right now is that we're still blaming the devil for stuff that we're doing. Are you with me? I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. If you do not get, I tell you, I will come back to this, and I got one more scripture and I'm done. If you are not intimate in a relationship with your spouse, nothing's working in your house. Nothing. I'm going to say it again. Where the married people at? If I'm lying, put your hand down. If you're not intimate, nothing is working in your house. Nothing's responding to anything you try. But the moment you restore intimacy, the moment you start to communicate again, the moment you begin to effectively communicate, because see, the problem is a lot of people are communicating, but it's not effective. See, cussing you out when I'm mad is not, that's still communication. It's just not effective. If you're not doing something to try to please the other half, if you're not trying to find out what really makes them tick, then you really only responded to how you feel. And God said, that's the problem with Israel. That's the problem with the body of Christ. They always want to tell me how they feel, and they really don't want to know me. He said, so we have a communication problem. He said, but if you will learn how to draw closer, he said, then I'll draw closer to you. He said, when you learn how to talk to me, I will talk to you in a way you understand, in a way that you can comprehend. Are you with me? So here it is. How many of y'all know that when intimacy is right, everything responding right in the house? Somebody ought to shout hallelujah right there. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say everything <laughs> responding. Amen? Amen. Last verses, 22 and 23. Look what it says. And the earth shall respond to the grain and the new wine and the oil which beg it to bring them forth. You see that? The earth talking to the, the grapes, the grapes talking to the wine. <laughs> Everybody like, man, look, they in place now, God. We want to show up. We want to make it happen. He said, they will respond to Jezreel, my Israel, who will now be restored. For I was so hurt for myself in the land. 
I will also have mercy on her who have not obtained mercy. And I will say to those, here it was, who were not my people, you are my people. And they will say, you are my God. All of this happens because we made a decision to draw closer to God. And God says, when you make that decision, I will draw closer to you. Here's the last thing. Our problem is, when we mess up, we do like Adam. We run from God. We try to hide from God. We stop coming to church. We stop fellowshipping with other believers. Because we have a guilt and we have a shame that's on us for messing up. But if you really heard what God was telling you today, he said, there's nothing you can do that will make me turn my back on you. There's nothing you can do that will make me stop wanting to be intimate with you. So here it is. He said, when you mess up, don't run from me. Run to me. When you mess up, run to God. When you mess up, do what the woman with the issue of blood did. If I could just get to him and touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made whole. Now you understand why the enemy don't want you to get to praise and worship. Because if, when you mess up, if you show up in praise and worship, God will let you know in the midst of why you're singing adoration to him. He said, I really want you to know I forgave you the moment you did it. You know, I told somebody this week, I said, God only has one verdict. When you go to court, it's either not guilty or guilty. But with God, he only has one verdict. It's not guilty. <laughs> but pastor, God know I did it. Yes, but he still finds you not guilty. He said, I know you did it, but if you would just draw it closer to me, <laughs> you're not guilty. But, but Pastor, you don't know the stuff I've done. And I tell you, yeah, I don't know. But God knows. And the moment you draw close to him, he draws close to you. And there's only one verdict. <laughs> Not guilty. So who's believing God for restitution this year? You can't just sit back. You can't just sit back and wait for God to send it by UPS or FedEx, Amazon. Make sure I get the plug in. <laughs> Amazon. It, it ain't coming that. It, 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 it may come that way or not, but you know what's going to kick it off? James chapter 4, verse 7. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil. He will flee. But what's the most important part? Draw close to God. And God will draw close to you. Stop running from God and start running to God. And watch how God start turning your situations around. Anybody got anything out of this today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Anybody in here ready to anybody in here ready to get closer to God? If you're ready to get closer to God, just stand on your feet and get in a place of, of submission. But he said, therefore, submit unto the Lord. She's like, right now, I'm just going to help you out. See, if you're sitting down now, oh, Lord, I got to stand up again. God said, you can sit down because your heart ain't right. See, submitting to God starts with a heart. Remember, he told you, see, he's going to take that heart of stone out and give you a new heart of flesh. So you're going to take that old man that's on the inside of you and put his spirit on the inside of you. This is our season. This is our time. God has summoned you here to hear from his throne that he loves you in spite of. He wants you to know he's madly in love with you and he desires to be intimate with you. But none of it works unless you want it in return. So in this time, I'm asking you that if this is what you really want,
to press your hands up in the air. Father, in the name of Jesus, you're looking down from your throne of grace right now, and you're looking at your people. You see who hands are up, but more importantly, God, you see who heart is matching their hands. You know who's real and who's authentic about this, God. You know who's sincere about this, God. And right now, God, I thank you now, God, that you are a man of your word. I understand, God, that you, that you are spirit. But, God, you're not a man that you should lie. And you say that if you said it, won't you make it good? So, God, you said in your word that if, you draw, if we draw near to you, you would draw near to us. So, God, this is our day. We make the conscious decision, God, to press into you. Now give us the strength to resist the devil. Give us the strength to resist the voices that would try to speak into our lives to try to get us off track. Give us the power to press through every distraction that is trying to keep us from getting to you. God, I ask now that you touch every heart in this room and give them a newfound love for praise and worship. A newfound love, God, that they will want to get to the place where they can meet you and talk to you and commune with you. Now, God, I ask you now to release a new, fresh wind of love over all of your people, God. That they can feel your presence, God. Because it's in your presence, God, that they're going to be changed. It's in your presence, God, that each and every one of us, God, will move to the next level in you. It's in your presence, God, that we draw closer to you. So, Father, I thank you right now that you are faithful to our petitions and our prayers. I thank you right now, God, that as we stand here, God, us standing here, God, is a type and shadow of our repentance for not drawing closer to you before today. So, God, from this day, God, receive our prayer, receive our hearts, receive our submission to you. And we thank you now that even testimony will go forth of how you have drawn closer to us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. If you receive that prayer, shout, I receive in Jesus' name. Now give God the fruits of your lips. Give him the prayers he deserves. Hallelujah. You may have your seats. Here's your homework assignment. Everybody shout, press. See, if you go home, you can read Mark chapter 4 on your own. And what you're going to read about is that as soon as the word of God goes forth, the enemy comes in and tries to steal it from you. He doesn't want it to rest in your spirit. He doesn't want it to settle in your heart. You got to press beyond anything that's going to come against you to try to stop you from getting closer to God. Nobody can do it for you but you. But you can do it with the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now and I offer Jesus Christ to your people. Let them hear the invitation coming from you, oh God. God, even minister to them. God, I know by the way of the Holy Spirit that measure of faith that you have and given to each and every one of us is enough for us to hear your voice to answer the invitation to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. There may be one here today, and you're saying, well, Pastor, I want to draw closer to God. But Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is that door for you to get to God. You're not getting to God unless you go through Jesus. So if you're ready to give your life to Jesus Christ today, you're ready to do that today. It's very simple. The Word of God, it says that if you confess with your mouth, and believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God and God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It's that simple. You confess it and you believe that Jesus is Lord and you are saved. It's, you were never a sinner by what you did. You were a sinner by the condition of your heart, your nature. The moment you confess with your mind and believe in your heart, your nature changes. And then you become conscious of sin. So if you're ready today and you're ready to give your life, just simply repeat this prayer behind me 
after me and mean what you say. Heavenly Father, I come to you just as I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son who died on the cross and after three days he rose again for my sins. Holy Spirit, come into my life and create me a clean heart and renewing me a right spirit. Heavenly Father, I believe by the confession of my mouth and the belief in my heart that Jesus is Lord, I am saved, I am saved, I am saved in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just said that prayer and believed what you said for the very first time, you married the two together, you confessed and you believed, you are now saved. There's no doubt about it. You are. What you need to do now is you need to join a ministry. You need to join a church that's going to teach you the Word of God, to teach you how to walk out your own soul salvation. Being saved is one thing. Being sanctified is another. So if you are looking for a church home, we offer Living the Word International to you. If this is not the place for you, we pray that the Lord will lead you to the place where you need to be. We said it before, we mean this. This church is not about trying to build the biggest church in St. Tammany. This church is about advancing the kingdom as much as we can until Jesus comes back. So it's not about membership. We're teaching our members here, you're not just a number on the roster. You're here because the Lord has led you here to connect here, to fellowship here, to grow here. That's the reason why you become a member of somebody's church. So if, the, if you, Living the Word is the place for you, please fill out the Get Connect card in the seat. Fill it out online at, at our website, www.ltwi.org. You can connect as a friend. You can connect as a member. Maybe you save and say, well, Pastor, I want to get baptized. We'll baptize you too. You don't have to be a member of this church to get baptized. If you want to get baptized, we'll baptize. You can be walking down the street and say, I want to get baptized. We're going to open the door and come put you right there in that pool. Because why? we commanded to do that. You see, that's why I told you we're not going to do church. We're going to be the church. So if the Lord is leading you to join this church, fill it out. Maybe there's somebody here today. They said, Pastor, what about me? I gave my life to Jesus Christ, and I knew when I gave it, I was serious about it, but I've fallen away from God. I'm the one you're talking about. I'm the one that's that hasn't drawn close to God, where there's hope and expectation for you too. Just like it was for Gomer in the book of Hosea. And here it is. All you have to do is just simply say this. God, that's me. Please forgive me. Please restore me in Jesus' name. As I pray for you. You don't have to repeat anything after me. You have to take ownership for your own life. And you have to take ownership for your life eternal. And the way you do that, God, that's me. Please forgive me. Please restore me in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I come to you now and I lift up each and every person, God, that is returning back to you, recommitting a life to you, God. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you now as they take ownership, God, for falling away from you, God. You showed us in your word, God, that the relationship has always been in place. You've never stopped desiring to be, desiring to be intimate with us. You want us to draw closer to you that you may draw closer to us. So, God, as they come back to you today, God, taking ownership, God, for separating themselves from you, for moving the fellowship away from you while you held on to the relationship. God, I thank you now that you will restore them back into the rightful place, God. You showed us in the word that when you restore, God, you don't just bring us back. You restore us with full authority and dominion. So, God, I thank you now that your children have come back home and they're in the right place and they're walking now in the authority and the dominion that you promised us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. If you just said, God, that's me, please forgive me, please restore me, it just happened for you immediately. Your authority is back in place. Your dominion is back in place. You're back in the place you're supposed to be with God. Now be committed to the thing you just did. Keep coming to church. Keep doing what you need to do. Amen? Amen. Now, is there anybody in this room believe that somebody got saved, somebody gave their life to Jesus Christ? Would you put your hands together?
Amen. Amen. So here it is. If you gave your life to Christ, you recommitted your life to Christ, we ask that you fill out that card in the seat before you. You fill that out, one of our ministry team members will be contacting you by tomorrow to walk you through your next step. Same thing online. If you did it online, go online, fill out the card online, and you'll receive a call from one of our ministry team members by tomorrow to help you walk through your next steps. Amen? Amen, amen. What time is it? What time is it? It is time and offering time. And this is a time for your opportunity for prosperity. We tell you all the time to trust God with your tithe and your offering and watch God honor his word. Amen? Watch God honor his word. Hallelujah. Do I have any other handheld announcements that I need to talk about? Amen. Who's celebrating the birthday this week? Anybody celebrating? Celebrating the birthday? Please stand. Please stand. You don't have to. If you don't want to, you don't have to. <laughs> All right? Amen. Who's that? Elder still in the back celebrating your birthday? What you say? What you say? Look at that. Standing out like the man of steel. I see you. I see you. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Uh, Y'all know we used to make both of y'all birthday in the same week? All right, so y'all standing in the gap for your kids? Your birthday is Tuesday. All right, cool, 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 cool. Who else? Hey, Amen. Your birthday is this week as well. Hey, Amen. I saw somebody else, your birthday too. I got you. Hey, Amen. <laughs> I got you. Hey, Amen. Everybody, we used to make y'all dance. We don't do that no more. Hey, Amen. But everybody point a hand at them and say, Happy birthday. Happy birthday. May the Lord bless you to see many, many more. Now decree this over their life. Say, may you live long, strong, healthy, and wealthy the rest of your days. Amen. Now y'all got to say, I'll receive. I'll receive. Amen. Anybody celebrating the anniversary this week? Anniversary. I, I told y'all. Y'all don't believe me. Other than Valentine's Day, y'all waiting on them refund checks. Nobody get married in February. <laughs> y'all don't believe me. I keep telling you that. Amen. Anybody met somebody this week online, eHarmony, anything? <laughs> we just want to celebrate you meeting somebody. That's all. All right. All right. Nobody? All right. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Um, as I said, right after service this morning, we have, a, we have a christening. So we're going to ask everybody, if you're not part of that christening, to um, vacate the sanctuary. Um, once again, for those that didn't hear me earlier, those that may not have been tuning in online, the governor of Louisiana, we are one of 48 states now that have lift, he has lifted the complete mask mandate. Masks are no longer required. Excuse me. <coughs> Masks are no longer required to be worn indoors or outdoors in the state of Louisiana. And um, they believe that we're in the, we're ending, we are approaching what is called an endemic. And that means that they believe we are fastly approaching how we can treat this virus like any other virus. Excuse me. I don't know if that's true. I don't. I know my other ground around the corner. <clears throat> and they want people to support the businesses. But here it is. The Bible tells us that we are subject to the laws of the land. Whether we agree with them or not. We're subject to them. So effective Wednesday night, <coughs> excuse me, effective Wednesday night, there's no longer a mass mandate at Living the Word. It is strictly your option. If you want to wear a mask, feel free to wear a mask. Nobody should tell you about wearing one. If you don't, wear, wear, want, don't want to wear a mask, it's your option. It's your option. I know some of y'all may not be comfortable with that, but here it is. We got to also trust God. Amen? Um, the numbers, I believe in the science. I do. That's why I didn't have a problem getting vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. I'm boosted. And if they call me next week and tell me they got a fourth shot, I'm going to be the first one in line to get that one too. Amen? Because um, we all vaccinated one time or another in life. You got to take the shot, that's a vaccination. You know, when you were kids, you couldn't go to school without being vaccinated. So we all get vaccinated. But I don't have no problem with anybody who chooses not to. So I won't have a problem with anybody. So here's what I said earlier, and I really mean this. 
Amen? Not wearing a mask didn't stop you from going nowhere else. Let that marinate for a second. It didn't stop nobody from going to the parade last night. It didn't stop nobody from going to the balls. All of the Mardi Gras balls. It don't stop you from going to restaurants. It don't stop you from going to Macy's, Dillard's, everywhere else. Please don't let it stop you from coming to church. Everybody shout amen. 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 Everybody shout amen real loud. Now, if y'all say the amen, I'm going to see all y'all here again next week. All right? Amen. See all y'all here again next week. But here's the next thing. I also believe that God does things in his own ways. So there are a lot of people that didn't come to church or come back because they said they couldn't wear the mask that long. I expect to see all y'all next Sunday. If you want to say, I can't wear that mask, you don't have to wear it next week, you ought to be the first one here next week. Amen? So when we are getting back to the place, I believe, and I pray, we're getting back to the place where we can almost have a real sense of normalcy. But here it is. If you are comfortable wearing a mask, feel free to still wear your mask. Don't let nobody pressure you and tell you not to wear a mask. Amen? If you want to wear it, you wear it. But I cannot, I cannot honestly go against the law of the land when I know my Bible tells me that I'm subject to it. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. So if y'all still all right with me? Yes, sir. You got something, sir? Somebody texting me something? Hold on. Councilman Pichon, you here, sir? Oh, come on, man. I, I can't see nobody, man. I'm sorry. Thank you. Let us receive Councilman Pichon. I don't, I don't have my other mic. Anybody got a mic? I don't have another mic. We'll run, get the one out of my office real quick, please. We're going to get your mic. Man, I didn't see you, brother. How are you, man? You good? I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Let, let me tell you guys something about your pastor as it relates to, um, to our local politicians. He'll tell you. First time I met him, came in the office. I said, I just want to hear your platform. Let me give his platform. And here's the, the commitment I made to him. I said, if you win, I said, we pledge our total support for everything in this community to be a whatever we could do to help this community to be blessed. I said, but if you don't do your job, I'll be the first one to let everybody know you ain't do nothing you said you were going to do. <laughs> All right? That's I can correct. stand here. Let me, let me turn it on for you, sir. Testing. It's on? All right. I can stand here. Now, he's, he's been a councilman over District A, I believe, right? One time? One time, then you went at large. I could tell you, standing here in all honesty, that everything he told me that he would do or try to do, he has done. Yeah. On you, brother. Thank you, Pastor. First of all, I, I want to claim that word today. Amen. That was my word. That was for me. Good morning, church. It's good to be here, Living the Word International. I, um, I served the people of this town for eight years. And in those eight years, I've had to fight every single day to make sure that the laws, the opportunities, budgeting is fair for everybody in this town. And we, we're winning those victories. But you're not going to read about them on the front page of the newspaper. You're not going to hear about them on the nightly news. But we are winning. In this campaign for re-election, personally, for me, is the biggest battle that I've ever fought in politics because I've learned to appreciate the value of having a seat at the table for us in this town. And, and it's, it's, it's really important. And I'll just tell you this story. When I, when I was sworn in eight years ago, I was the only council person to be sworn in by my pastor, Pastor Favre. Most people had their attorneys and 
and different people. The, a judge swore somebody, and that was fine. But we wanted to send a, a, a strong message to people in, in the community that we were going to be led by God throughout this political journey, right? And, and we, we wanted to repel the devil, but he doubled up. And, and, I mean, the roaches, the snakes, everybody came out the woodworks. And they want to try you. They want to test you. They want to break you down. And many nights, I can remember tossing and turning still to this day. And you know what I do? I, I jump my butt out the bed and get on my knees and ask God to lead me in these decisions. And he has. And, we, like I said, we've been winning. And we hope to keep winning for the next four years. That's why I ask for your support. Consider me. And... Um, I'm going to make that commitment again to the people of Slide L that I'll continue to lead, be led by God and do the right thing for this town because I understand the weight of serving in that seat. Thank you. My ballot number is 10. But we'll, we'll have forums. We have forums, like seven forums in the next two days or next two weeks. You can catch uh, me Wednesday night at the city council chambers will be the Alliance for Good Government. We'll have a forum there. You'll be able to hear my platform. They'll, they'll be quizzing us. It's a great opportunity to get to, you know, get to see the candidates in person. In addition to that, we'll have forums. They'll be announced, city auditorium, different associations throughout the city. So you'll get a good chance to see me. If not, you can always call me directly. Call the council office, get my number. I'll be happy to talk to anybody about my platform. And keep my number anyway. And if you ever need anything, please don't hesitate to call me because we can work to get your issues resolved. Thank you. But I'm to, uh, there we go, 30 seconds. Uh, I do that with every one of them. I want you to know that. Sheriff, mayor, parish president, city council, I don't care who it is. Because why? As a leader in this community, my assignment is to support the leadership in this community as long as they're doing what they're supposed to do. If they're not doing what they're supposed to do, then I'm supposed to be the first one walk in the office for the community and say you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Amen. So, like you said, um, I said this, this one little thing. Um, I was on the sheriff's transition team when the sheriff became the sheriff. I was on his transition team and had to do an assessment of the sheriff's department, let him know what was good, what was bad. I was one of the members. And um, one of the people came up to me and they said, man, you know, you now that you're retired from the NOPD, he said, man, um, why don't you just go on and, and apply and get a position with the sheriff's department? You're more than qualified. I said, no, sir. Don't want it. They said, man, you wouldn't want a job. You know, you more than likely, you could probably come in as a, a ranking officer. I said, no, I don't want it. And they asked me why. I said, because the moment I take the commission, I got an answer to the sheriff. But the moment I still pass without a commission, he got an answer to me. <laughs> because why? I speak for you all. I speak for you. It's not me that, that they're really concerned about. It's what I would say to you about what really happens behind the scenes that people are concerned about. And I ain't going to lie to y'all. I'm going to tell you the truth. I would tell you, nope. I would tell you, yes. Amen? I just want you to know that's how we operate as a church. That's our culture. Holding your tired, holding your offering in here. Peter after me, say, Lord. This is my tithe. This is my offering. These are the seeds I sow. I believe that every word in my Bible is inspired by you. Therefore, I have a right to name the seed, command the seed, to go, to grow, and to come back to me 100-fold in the name of Jesus. Now, if you believe you already got what you're believing for, waving in the air, say, I already got it in Jesus' name. Amen. Standing on your feet, holding your right hand in the air. Those that have your envelopes, you can deposit it in the back. If you did it online, thank God. Stand on feet, holding your hand in there. Repeat after me. Much prayer, much power.
Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. Only way out the door, find you three or four people. Tell them, say, keep pressing, keep pressing, keep pressing. God bless you all. Everybody with the christening, please come forward. Come down the middle aisle. If you're here for the christening, come down the middle aisle up to the front.